You're live. Hello, everybody. <laughs> um, welcome to our Thursday afternoon live at the Matuska Tax Jury Studio here. Um, I'm Tom Matuska, uh, here for the Matuska Tax Jury Supply Company with Brett Wingfield, Mandy Swart, Kirsten, our camera girl. And uh, today we're going to tell him a little bit about fish fins, I think, aren't we? Yep. Yeah. We're surrounded by fish right now. And we're surrounded by fins. We had a pretty busy day in the shop. We've got uh, uh, a lot of you commented on the red stag. We have red stag going. Um, Amber was waist deep in Cape Buffalo today. Um, we've got fish shipping out. We have stag shipping Sable. out. Hmm? Sable? Sable, yeah, Sable. Sable, all kinds of African things. We've got a crocodile coming up and we'll try to, in the upcoming week, show you some, uh, some of the highlights of those projects. But today we're gonna do a little bit on fish fins. Yep. And uh, we mount our fish. They look typically like this largemouth bass, which you saw us do in a uh, previous session. And uh, Brett mounted that for us. And if you remember, he took the plastic uh, carding, the perforated carding on the front and the, and the fin carding system on the back. Um, he's all pinned up. And, and if any of you have done fish before, you know that the fins dry like butterfly wings and they're extremely fragile. What I like to do is treat my fins for flexibility first, which keeps them from breaking during the rest of the eye setting and the seam on the back and the buildup of the shrunken areas. Um, so that's kind of what we're gonna touch on today. Yep, this would be about step five in our fish mounting how-tos. We've got all of those previous videos on our website to get us to that point. Five on out of Facebook. 50 on Facebook. I know, I was gonna ask and that. Five out of 50. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. any of our videos, they are still up on Facebook. So just go to our Facebook page, make sure you like and follow because it'll notify you when we go live. But um, you can rewatch any of the videos that are on there under the video tab. And what we want to do is, uh, this fish is not, these fish have not been glossed, these bass, but these fins are pretty durable. Um, what you don't want to have is, these fins are like butterfly wings, and you don't want to have, you know, a wife or a significant other or yourself dusting your fish and break a fin on a brand new mounted fish. Um, I want my fins to be durable, flexible, with a little bit of care, you can dust them, and they will stay looking like this for years to come. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> We'll get these out of the way for you. Run another one. There are a lot of fish. We got a big pack of fish. We are. We are live every Thursday at 4.30. So make sure you follow us so you can keep up on all the tips and tricks and new products for these guys. I'll just pull some of this out for you. Do you want to tell them about a healthy fin? And I can pull some... Pull those cards off for you. Sure. Um, you'll see a lot of a lot of taxidermy work with people that treat fins differently. Um, everybody has their own idea of what a fin should look like. Don't go by other mounted fish. Don't go by what you think. Look at a real fish. When you catch a real fresh fish, spread his tail or look at his fins and notice how smooth the edges are or are not. Um, this is a walleye. Can you zoom in on this one, Kirsten? This is a healthy, healthy walleye tail, caudal fin, and it's gorgeous as far as the back edge. Um, here is an anal fin. That too is very, very pretty on the edges. You don't see any big splits going in and out. You don't see, a lot of times the damage on fish is caused from nets, um, laying them up on the rocks. Here's a nice pike fin. And you notice the edges are not perfectly, perfectly, perfectly straight. Not like scissors cut, but they're also not chattered up like, like the mounted fish typically will be. Um, so the next time you catch a fish, um, look at some of these, you know, what the fins look like, and that's what, you, what we want to reproduce. Don't reproduce other people's mounted fish. Um, we have students all the time through here, and they say, I want my fish fins looking real natural. So all they want to do is put a, a flexitive on them, and they've got giant splits that all go all the way, you know, to the, to the body. Um, we like to fix that kind of thing, unless there's a request for it. Sometimes you'll have a largemouth bass. On this one, you can see his, his uh, 
caudal fin, the tail is wore off probably from fan in the nest. And um, that's pretty common. Some people like that left like that and some people want to fix that. So just to point out real quick too, those photos you're showing are actually all from our photo sets. So you can actually purchase all those photos in a photo set. We have some like great, great walleye, close 24 up pictures. walleye photos, 24 um, height and all that. So you can get those. And these are good for coloration, they're good for shape, they're good for position, you know, they're good for a whole lot of things. Um, so always have a good repertoire of photos that you can look at. Tell me what you're taking off and what you're saving, because you can reuse all that, right? Yeah, these are, this is our fin carding system, right? We sell this as a kit. Um, there's the, the mesh side and the smooth side, and Tom's got, what, three or four boxes? I got a lot. I got a trout box, I got a panfish box, I got a pike and musky box, uh, big Tupperware totes that, now he's putting this in on, the, on that, it says four to six pound largemouth bass. Those cards that he took off will accommodate any four to six pound largemouth. Um, all I have to do is go through the tote when I'm doing fish, I never throw these away. We used to use screen, like uh, aluminum window screen. And screen works very, very well, and you can trim it and bend it any way you want to, but when you, um, take it off, it always clings together and it's really difficult to save. Um, the strands start coming unwoven, it's real hard to work with. Um, this plastic will last forever, you'll never never wear it out. Yeah. And it's a huge time saver um, to have these already cut out for the right shapes and sizes. And, um, grab that box or that bag out of the box for the right size fish and I bet you save yourself 15-20 minutes just in trimming. Yeah, if you have to trim them every time, it takes time. You have John Block watching from American Tax Rent Company, Akron, Ohio. Hi, John. Um, Pete Graff, always good info shared here. We're located in Northwest Iowa, Speedy Zone for those of you that have Speedy around. But um, give us a call, look us up online, and we will help you out on anything you need. Most of the stuff that the guys are using during our videos, we do carry in-house so we can walk you through that as well. You also have Jimmy Lawrence watching. Jimmy, and hello. Jimmy. Jimmy. I wore your shirt last was, week. You wore it today too, actually, and changed out of it. I just changed out of it you because did. I it's thought like it was a weekly shirt, Jimmy. overkill for my favorite well, patron. Well, favoritism. <laughs> <laughs> Can't have any of that. Hey, did anybody else send us shirts? No. We said you sent us shirts. We're wearing shirts. Promote you. <laughs> uh, this is just a piece of foam, like packing foam. Um, we like to save these pins, keep them upright like this. When you mount fish, we've got Euro pins, which we like to use, um, T pins, the uh, upholstery pins, and it's kind of nice to have all that stuff in here. Um, our wires that we use for the top and bottom jaw, it's just really handy to have them assembled like this, and we just save that. That goes back on our fish mounting table when we mount fish. We'll have our carding system, we'll have our pins, we'll have our wires, and it makes things go very fast. The, only way to make money in tax for me is to become efficient and you know the more organized you can be and any of you that know that I'm a pretty organized person. I, was, I, was uh, very, I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> uh, it's very helpful. Yes it is. Yes it is. So this fish is, we've got all the fin cards off now. This is probably the most fragile state this fish is going to be in. Yeah you can just hear. These things are just like crisp paper. Yeah. I, I say just like butterfly wings. And we don't like to leave them like this very off for very long. If There's... you start setting eyes and building heads and doing seams, yeah. you're going to crunch these and they will never look nice again. Something's going to get broken. So the first thing we do, no matter what kind of a treatment we do with our fish, and there are several options of backing um, and strength, but the first thing we do, no matter what, I think, is base coat sealer. I'd put some kind of a sealer on the fins. We've always had most of the flexitives that we use, I would say, are, are water-based. And um, there's been, every, every company has several different flexitives. And most of them, once the water base soaks into the fin, the fin gets wavy. So we kind of learned a long time ago, it's pretty helpful to seal your fish fin first with something that's not water-based. And this is just Life Dome base coat sealer. You have a favorite brush for this? Um, I use those because I don't take care of my brushes, but these chip brushes do lose hairs. So as you seal your fish, make sure that you 
check for any stray hairs on your fish because fish don't have hairy tails. <laughs> Um, so I'll just brush this on. We're going to put it on both sides. Mm -hmm. We don't have to let it dry in between. Just one nice coat. Um, and you could spray this. Yeah, um, we've done that before. Yep. Yep. I think I think you get a little better coverage this way. So it's a, um, you're using LT100 base coat sealer. Yep. And while I seal seal these, do you want to go through some of the next steps? Some of the options for flexitives. Okay, now let me grab some around here. I'll get behind you, Kirsten. You have David Menner watching from Texas. You have Jig and Jim from Minnesota. Jig and Jim, Jig that's and pretty Jim. cool. Jackie Kelly's watching. Jackie, Jackie Kelly. I think she watches every really well. Thank you for the gifts. Yeah. Thanks for the visit. You guys should sell. <laughs> Mark Crane says you guys should make and sell a cool pin cushion. I have brought that up before and he x it. I was all about it, Mark. Um, okay, now, there's several different ways to treat your fins. Now, we're going to put a backing on this fin and probably use silk span. It's one of our preferred methods in the shop. If you were doing a competition fish, um, you're not going to want to put a backing on or anything that will show. So you would want to have a perfect fin and you would want to treat it with some kind of a flexitive. Um, different flexitives that we use, um, one of the simplest, you can get anywhere, I think you can get it from us at a very reasonable cost, is um, Mod Podge, and it's a craft product. And you Mod, use that for a lot of We use Mod too. Podge for texture on our deer noses, and uh, fish fins, and sealing Sealers, bird yeah. feet, and bird bills. Mod Podge is just a, a good product. It comes in a lot of different varieties. I think we carry the gloss and we carry the matte. Yep, and a gallon of them too. Yes, and we have gallons. Yep. Um, it's very good. Nice product. Um, another one that's a water-based product is Tough Fin made by the Life Tone uh, people. Now I see you're getting that up on the skin of the fish and you don't worry about that either, do you? I don't. I'm going to seal the You're going to seal the fish anyway, anyways. so if it drips on the fish, spread out any drips and paint it yeah. in and it adds to your sealer. Yeah, just make um, sure you catch any runs. If there are any runs in it, just catch them and smooth them out. And Tough Fin, Tough Fin is a nice clear product. All these dry clear. Um, Dermagrip, we understood that we were told that we were using this wrong, but we used it on our world fish. Um, yeah. And Dermagrip looks white in the container. Looks like thin down Elmer's glue. When you paint it on the fish, it turns purple and you'll get kind of panicky because you'll think it's gonna stay that way. Um, Dermagrip is another water-based product. So it didn't stay that way. No, it turns clear. <laughs> um, it's scary though. It's still silifin, silifin is a silicone-based, water-based flexitive. Works very nice. All of these work good. I don't have qualms about using any of them. Um, if you use one and you like the results, you know, kind of choose whichever one you like. Um, in the early days, there were a couple of uh, um, really exceptional ones from some tax service in Minnesota that they made. Any of you Minnesota people might remember it. Um, I think one was FinFlex, and I'm not sure FinFlex wasn't a Tom Whitbeck uh, product, and FinFlex was very good. And another one, maybe by Tom Elias, was Finacryl, spelled P-H-Y-N, and I've always wondered, it's very strong smelling. This really strong smelling stuff that is gonna kill you sooner or later, it works really good. And uh, Finacryl was a great product, and some of the people told me it was styrofoam cups melted in acetone. Mm -hmm. And oh, I've wow. never tried it, but it was a wonderful fin flexitive. Wow, are those people still around? No, <laughs> <laughs> Tom Elias might be, Tom Whitbeck, not so much. Okay, don't try uh, this at all. Another, another thing, now, now Tell me what you're gonna do with that when that dries, and then so, I'll give them another example. Yep, so we're gonna let this dry um, completely. This is a lacquer-based product. Um, it's just our Lifetone lacquer sealer. It will dry in five or 10 minutes mm -hmm. most, um, under most conditions, so um, it'll dry a little faster if it's warm. Um, if it's cold, it'll be a little bit slower, but once it's dry, we need to put a backing on it. Um, we're gonna back all of the fins except the spiny dorsal. Um, and we're gonna use, 
I think just Mod Podge and sure. Silkspan. Um, we have really good results with it. The nice thing about Silkspan is it will heal, it will fill in some of all of these gaps. Um, and that's what, what is Silkspan? I think Silkspan is lens cleaning tissue, isn't it? It almost is, Something yeah. Something like that. Some people use um, dryer sheets. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a strong, it's, it's like tissue paper. We used to get it from a model airplane company that would coat their balsa wood airplane bodies and wings with this, and then they would spray on, um, I think, a lacquer type product, which would give it a skin. And some people think it's tissue paper. It's not tissue paper, and tissue paper doesn't work, like packing paper, like you get a nice fine linen in or things like that. Um, let me show them the, I'll show them the Lexon. We did this for years, and Lexon is another backing. The silk span he's going to put on with, with uh, Mod Podge, and because it's water-based, it'll stick right into the, the tissue, fibrous tissue. Um, this is Lexon, like bulletproof windshields are made of, and we use this for years and years and years. Gives you an extremely durable fin, an excellent look on the front side. On the back side, it's going to be smooth, so it's, a, it's for a one-sided fish, a fish on the wall. Um, I have Lexon fish that are, geez, 25, 30 years old. They look exceptional. Look on the back, you're gonna see that smooth Lexon. We don't use it so much. looking? Yeah, on the back. Um, we tend to do stuff more 360 degrees than we ever did, so we've kind of moved away from Lexon a little bit. Lexon needs to be put on with a contact cement. Contact cement, you put contact cement on the back of the fin, you put it on one side of the Lexon, let it dry, push them together, and uh, trim it and then paint it with your flexitive. Chad Stewart says um, coffee filters work good also. Sure. Um, you always used to tell us that Lexons with Hope Mobiles made out of Hope Mobiles made out of Lexons. Bulletproof. You can't tear it, you can't break it, you can't do anything to damage Lexon other than wrinkle. That's why it's good for fins. Bulletproof fish fins. It has to be thicker for the bulletproof, I think. <laughs> You have Chuck Lawson from North Carolina and Ann from Nebraska. Hi, Chuck and Ann. Hello, hello. Thanks for tuning in. I think I'm all dry. Good. Now, um, we're going to give you some Mod Podge. Do you remember um, John Black says, fix a fin from Castaway Coolant? Oh, sure. Uh, that would be better. How do you repair um, freezer burnt fins? Ooh. Soak them, soak them, soak them. Freezer burnt fish most often come out of it eventually. Um, I have used um, um, Ultra Soft to soak fish in. A little bit of soap in your water will make your water wetter and penetrate better. Um, most often, unless it's 10 years not wrapped properly, if it's that bad, then we might need to go to artificial fins. First, I am just gonna show you here. We're gonna put a thin coat on the back side of all of these. And this is just the Mod Podge. We're using it straight out of the container. Ooh. And that's the gloss Mod Podge you're using, correct? And Matt, we have a fine job with Matt too. We have no problem with Matt. So either one? Mm -hmm. I think I was going to leave that tail for you to do with like Oh, <laughs> well, you still can when it dries. I wondered what the ooh was about. Uh, I heard this weekend about a uh, fish rejuvenation formula that some fancy scientific thing that Ricky Crane likes to soak his fish in, fish in for reproducing. That might work for... for uh, freezer burned fish. I don't remember what it is though. It's too complicated for me. <laughs> and congratulations on your your oh. win at the NTA. Yeah. Well, congratulations to all the winners. There were some there were there some impressive impressive pieces there. We kind of tried to show you like three times I know. and <laughs> could not get that Wi-Fi to work. We, Technology. I know. We might get kicked off today yet. 
curse me, like, don't jinx me. Hmm. Uh, hey. This one, <clears throat> are you going to say something about that? Nope, I was just going to say he painted that on the back, and, and by pushing that uh, silk span right into that wet glue, it'll soak right through, and then you can trim off a little bit of the excess so you don't have so much on there, and then actually push it right down between the rays, and you, done right, you almost have to look twice, even from the back side, to see it. Um, why does Alexan turn brown? I'm repairing an older fish, even had some with the straw wrapped bodies. Do you think uh, it might be acetate that? that's turning brown? I've never seen Lexon turn brown. Lexon won't, it'd be the glue in between, I'm thinking. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The glue in between, yeah. Jake and Jim. You know, a lot of people used to uh, use tape, and uh, we had a taxidermist, I mean, like a legend taxidermist in our area here before I got started, and he used strapping tape. Strapping tape used to be, I think he'd still buy it, has fibers running the length of the tape, and all of his fins were. Um, you better scissors? I do. <laughs> I think those have seen uh, some glue, and these might have to. And uh, these are good. Good enough? Yeah. Sean Conrad wants to know if fish are your favorite to work on. Love the musky. Ah. These two are fish gurus. Would you say we fish like are fish. your favorite? We do like fish. I like fish a lot. Mm. A little too much. A little bit. A little too much. <laughs> Um, I'm going to put a second coat on now just to push this in, kind of to keep it from sticking to my brush and lifting off, but trying to work all of the air out of it. I'm just going to make sure and paint all the way past the edge. Now when we do fish, we'll have a lot of mounted fish like, like this bass, and we will get kind of an assembly line going where where you got all your Lexon or your um, silk span pieces cut, and you have your glue, and you seal them all. Go to the next one, seal it, seal it, seal it, until the first one's dry, and then go back, put all your parts on that one, and just keep going until that's dry. Come back and put another coat on, another coat on. Yeah. Um, Mark Drexler wants to know if Lexon would work on the webbing of a wood duck foot that slip split. Yeah, I'm not sure there's not something better, but yes, it yeah. would. Um, to span the gap, I'm assuming. Um, you could, you, you're gonna lose all your texture because the lexan is, is clear. It or might. I mean, is smooth. Um, I'm not sure there might be a better way to do that. That lexan might make a, a nice temporary backing. Backing that you can build on, that you can yeah. build the webbing, build it on, yeah. King Manny Apoto from Australia is watching. Oh, wow. Holy smokes. Hello from, or good morning. Good morning. You. Good morning, yeah. <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and put some on these other fins here too. Well, I'll show you what can happen if you don't treat your fins properly. Oh, um, yeah. We do a lot of repairs around here. Don't say that. We don't want repairs in, right? <laughs> no. No, yeah. we don't. We don't do a lot of repairs. We don't want to do a lot of repairs. <laughs> we do do a lot of repairs. <laughs> but uh, this is a fish. Um, and we had a rainbow trout in that was less than a couple years old that was in about this kind of shape too. But um, see these fins, this is what, this is what happens, oh. you know. That looks terrible. It's about to fall off right yeah, now. Yeah, that's what you don't want. <laughs> You're gonna have to do before and after shots of that one. Yeah, um, now this one, as we're talking about fins, there are other ways besides backing your fins like this. Um, this, we got a whole artificial fin set for this. So these fins will all be removed, plastic fins will all be put back on, and you'll be cleaned and painted, and you're gonna be amazed. Maybe we'll show you this in a six, seven years from now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't promise yeah. anything. That Don't bring in repairs. That's a tough one. Oh my gosh. Bob Steele from Steamboats, Colorado. Steamboat Springs. <clears throat> Hello, Bob. Um, another nice trick for the now, silk span comes in how many weights? Do we carry it? In? We just have the one. Oh, we just have the one. Um, we used to carry it in multiple weights. Um, we did. The thicker silk span, it worked nice to tear it, and then the edge would kind of disappear as it feathered out. Um, this thinner, this that we're using in the shop today, the edge pretty much feathers out. You don't see the edge, so you really don't have to worry about it. The, the silk span edge. factory burnt down. I was gonna what? say, because we don't get it from mm -mm. them anymore. 
we still call it Silk Span? Yeah. I, okay. We don't want to confuse people. I think it's, oh. uh, okay. I think it's an American name put to an Oriental product. Don't see that. Hmm? We also have, we also have a whole box called fins. And if I do not need a fin, I cut it off, throw it in a box, spread it maybe, throw it in a box for another day. Um, we have tail fans, we have artificial fans, we have spiny dorsals, um, all kinds of fin parts and pieces. And a lot of times we will take a little piece of this and patch the good fin, fin with. That box of fins has rescued a lot of fish from some pretty ugly damage. Um, you can take a little piece of a fin from a, that you save from a bluegill and you can cut a little triangle out of it and super glue it. For instance, yep. this largemouth right here, we could match that shape, cut that out, super glue it in, put a backing on, flexitive on the front and the back, you'll never know. Everybody yeah. start your fin box today. Yes, Gotta have definitely. a fin box. <laughs> Definitely, Tom, you've had that as long as I can remember. remember. And I mean, we have got little crappie pieces here. We've got pieces yeah. and parts and artificials. Wade Siegel says, checking in from Alabama. Thank you all for sharing your knowledge. 33 years in business and I'm still learning. We nice. are too. We are too, <laughs> yep. Joe Martin from California. John says that he has pee boxes just like that. Yeah. Now, a lot of times when you pose a fish, um, the pectoral fins on the sides really inhibit your display, like your driftwood or your panel or whatever, they're just plain in the way. Um, we've been known many times to cut that backside pectoral off and yeah. spread it and throw it in a box for a rainy day. Um, you know, the customer really doesn't Pay for that backside if it works a lot better for your display um, we aren't opposed to yep. removing it. It's this one over here a lot of times we'll go ahead and back it it's there it was spread and posed but if it gets in the way when we put it on mm -hmm. our final mount um, we'll cut it off and then we put it in the box and uh, it's there for like you said a rainy day. Um, so this is approaching dry back here. I left this one off too if we wanted to do that. Okay, we can do that. Um, you want to show them um, Lexon? I can do it. Um, okay, let's see what we got. It takes, in order to use Lexon, um, we buy contact cement in uh, five gallon containers and we don't ship it because hazardous. Um, it's yeah. hazardous. So you're going to want, um, if it smells like really, really strong, it'll work. Um, if, if it's the Elmer's contact cement that's safe for children to use, it probably won't stick very well. Um, now, the reason we're going to back the, ta the bottom part of the tail and the anal fin with Lexon, which is, you know, it's going to leave a smooth finish on the back, is because we're missing the lower lobe here and we're missing the back of the anal fin. Um, the Lexon has a smooth side and a rougher side. I like to use the rougher side out because my paint doesn't bead up on it. Um, is the only How many reason. layers of Mod Podge do you go? Do you use? I like to go at least three. Um, on some of your smaller fish, you may not need to, and depends upon how thick your initial layers are, but I put it on fairly thin, especially with this one, just so it can set up, um, so it will dry for demonstration, but in the shop, we'll use at least two or three. The more you use, the more durable, and the, the better, the more smooth the fin will be. Um, <clears throat> closer to natural. now. That's one thing to touch on too. Um, once these fins dry, they're no longer anywhere near natural. Um, the fin in its natural state will be nice and thick and plump. Um, these fins dry down to almost nothing. I'm gonna go ahead and give you that, cover that split too. If that's yeah, okay. that'd be perfect. Um, how about the little, there you go. Perfect. 
Okay, now, the only way that that uh, contact cement works is you have to put it on both surfaces and you have to let it dry. Put it on wet, it will not stick. So I'm gonna paint it on the lobe of the tail here that I'm gonna cover. Now this tail we could leave natural also because um, that's kind of typical of a big old female. Female fish. Fish. Female fish. Female fish. <laughs> you guys are gonna get me in trouble. <laughs> So this is kind of fun while you're doing that. We talked last week, we gave away $500 of supply giveaway, and we were talking about reviews because we've gotten a lot of nice reviews. And after we did that, we had a lot of reviews go on. So thank you to everyone who does it because we love it. But Mike Betts says, Tom, Tom's dedication to teaching makes life so much easier, especially for a beginner taxidermist like myself. Thanks for all you do. Five stars. Wow. Tony Donnellman have talked to Tom at the South Dakota Taxidermy Convention. He's a very nice, down-to-earth guy, willing to help anyone. Shipping charges have always been fair, always arrives on time, and with great service. You must have caught him on a good day. I know. <laughs> Shirley Hopkins, my order was shipped out so quickly. Really appreciate the speedy service. Five stars. John Ballmer, love your company. Five stars. John has been with us for ever. Yep. Jesse Wells, I was able to visit the shop a few weeks ago and do a walkthrough for the school. I was very impressed by the whole business. Their showroom is breathtaking. I am looking forward to attending this winter. Purchased wow. some products while visiting. Pieces were great. Definitely a top-notch crew. Five stars. Wow. Um, Jeremy Lee, amazing people will definitely go above and beyond to make sure their customers are taken care of. Thank you for everything. Five stars. Mick Trask, five stars. Hey, Bradley, Mick Trask. Mick. Bradley Grabber, five stars. <clears throat> the best people in taxidermy industry by far. Thank you for all you do in taxidermy shows. Adam Egbart's great service with awesome turnaround time, five stars. Thank you guys so much. That means a lot. And we always take these reviews and we hang them up for the employees to see because it's definitely an uplifter for everybody. We really love what we do and we love to keep doing it and hearing your guys' feedback. So thank you so much. Now, with the, with the Lexon and the contact cement, nothing's going to stick until that dries. And this is a, a solvent-based product, and it dries reasonably fast, but usually the way we, if we're going to use Lexon, we will paint a fish and the backing, slide it to the side, do another one, do another one, and we will keep coming back and checking on this one. Um, it needs to be dry or it's not going to stick. So I will... Uh, um, if I can interrupt, I maybe will run the hair dryer for just a yeah. little, little bit to make a little noise. Mm -hmm. Ooh, while he's doing that, I'll show him a little fish class. We got a Ooh. few uh, people to reply to okay. as well. While he's running the hair dryer, I'll let you guys kind of check over this flyer, but Brett Wingfield here is going to be putting on an advanced fish taxidermy course. It's September 7th, 8th, and then September 14th and 16th. And basically, he's gonna be showing you specimen handling and care, measurements, competition techniques, fiberglass reproduction, pattern making, customer relations, all sorts of fun stuff. The list goes on and on and on. So definitely, if you're looking to take your fish skills to another level, Northwest Iowa School of Taxidermy, Specialty yep. fish course. Give us a call. Yep. We've got some other specialty courses too that we'll be announcing for next year too, don't we? We got what? Some other specialty oh, courses yes. we'll be announcing too. We'll be doing keep posted, but we have our our normal nine week residential class, so we have that always going in the winter. Yep. And then we're gonna be doing um breaking up spring. So we do take advance. If you've gone to school somewhere else, no worries, you can still come here and we'll take Whatever you want to work on, if you want to gear it more toward fish or game heads or just learn more open mouth, competition quality, and we'll show you all that. But they're breaking up the spring into two-week game head, two-week birds, two-week fish, two-week reproduction. Almost. One, no two-week fish. One week. Got it. Barbara, Good production. thing you're here. I know. I know. <laughs> but yeah, so give us a call. 1-800-488-3256. Or visit us online at www.matuskataxidermy.com and we will help you start your way. And also, for those of you that just have questions on an everyday basis, 
We'll call you. We'll answer them. Um, you can give us a call, and we'll talk to the guys, figure it out, and get you on your way with whatever issues come up during your day. Almost right. Um, we need to congratulate another Northwest Iowa School of Tax and Army alumni for... Sam Cahoy. Yeah, Sam Cahoy. Yeah. He did real good at the National. North American champion yeah. in Turkey. Yeah. Um, one of the nicest turkeys I've ever seen. Very, very cool. Um, lots of big winners this past week. Friends, people that we that we see here online every every Thursday. So it was very, very, very fun. James Morrison says, I placed an order today. Please don't send chocolate. It is 102 here today. <laughs> you probably have a refrigerator you could throw that baby into, but we do try to gear it to Starburst and what are those, melty things? Are those, the nut rolls and stuff like that. Yeah. Because believe it or not, you won't hear from anybody about the candy bars. And then the second you send them a melted one or forget, we hear about we it. We did candy bars for, I'd say, two years and Never once, I mean, we thought it was kind of a nice touch. Never once did we hear, well, thanks for this candy bar. And all of a sudden we ran out one day and the phone oh. rang off the hook. <laughs> we never even knew you ever got them, you know, we thought. What made you start that anyway? <clears throat> it got away from us because it started at Christmas time because I thought, oh, this put, I mean, we had like five orders a day. We had three orders a day. So we would put a candy cane in the three orders because we were pretty small. and. We thought that was kind of neat, and so Easter came, so they got a little um, caramel Easter egg, you know. Thanksgiving giving came, they got a marshmallow turkey. Well, with the turnover in employees, they didn't get the gist of it. They thought candy was candy, so it turned into a generic candy bar. Okay, now, um, this is, I think it's tacky enough. It's dry to the touch. Um, this is dry to the touch. These will not stick until um, they're dry. So you want to make sure they're dry. You can leave this probably hours and hours and hours and hours. You can go eat dinner, let these things sit here, and uh, they're going to be fine. They're not going to, they will stick when you come back. Um, once you touch them together, there's no moving anything. So they have to be positioned exactly where you want them or um, you will not get them off. So you kind of hold them up here where you think you want them. And I'm going to do something like that. Push it on. And we'll do the tail. And so you painted it on both surfaces, right? Both surfaces. That's what, that's what a contact um, cement does. You have to put it on both surfaces. It's like, as a matter of fact, this stuff used to be, we got it from the Formica company. And it was, there was a number 345 or something like that. 145? Maybe 145 con, for Micah brand contact cement. Okay, push it on really, really good. And then we're gonna trim them. Um, Chad Stewart says, had the fins on a northern curl while using Mod Podge, started just doing outside edges first. Um, and it sounds like he uses tough fins. I think in that case, he's probably rehydrating it. Tuffin is also a water-based product. Mm -hmm. And if you seal your fins first um, with, with some sort of a lacquer-based sealer, we use base coat sealer, um, that shouldn't happen. Um, Don't be afraid to uh, recard your fins and hit them with a hairdryer too. Right. You know, that works really well too. Um, every once in a while we'll get get a fin that got away from us and we weren't, we weren't watching it careful and it kind of got wavy, we'll recard it. So now you're just using the natural fin as a guideline? I kind of am, yeah. Yep. Just following what the, fin, what the fin was. Can you use the Lexon to repair holes on the inside of a whitetail ear? Yes. I, I'm not sure I'd use Oh, not Lexon, I'm sorry. I was thinking silk span. Yeah, I think silk span works really good. Um, Lexon would be too rigid. I don't know that it would lay down very well. But silk span works well. Casey Broadhead says, Climber says, watching you guys is the perfect way to pass my time. <laughs> Will that give you something to start with? Yeah. Love having you watch us, Casey. Um, are you trimming the edges of your fins? I like using a 
pinking shears to give the fish fins a jagged edge, like natural? Uh, I think that would work if you're careful, and I think what would work better, I've always threatened, rather than a pinking shear, is those uh, scrapbooking scissors. I think they have some really decorative edges, and if you got just the very little, little edge, mm -hmm. it would work. Yeah, I would say less is best. Yeah. Um, don't do so the whole pinking. Yeah. Because fish fins don't look like that. Yep. Back to your reference. Um, you know, a good healthy fin is going to be fairly smooth. Um, so watch your reference as you're trimming your fins for shape too. Um, I, we see a lot of fins from old customer fish that we repair that fin shapes aren't um, as appropriate to the species as as they could be so watch your fin shapes as you're trimming we left all of this long and if say this were a smallmouth bass smallmouth has kind of a characteristic little duck tail yep. yeah we could even if it wasn't there or if it was damaged we could leave that on here um and then we could trim the fin to the appropriate shape and uh and then fix over it mm -hmm. Um, John Block wants to know for the advanced fish course, he if our location can handle a wheelchair and it can. It can. It can. Yep. Wheelchair. Called accessible. Darren Albert. Wheelie. Yep. Wheelie, yeah. Wheelie, yep. who is a wonderful student um, and a uh, good friend of ours. We see him at the Iowa Taxidermy Show all the time. And um, he went through, as a matter of fact, he was mm -hmm. one of our first people in a wheelchair and we installed our ramp just because of Darren. Yes. So this is a funny back to the candy. Derek Harriman says, just received my order. Thank you for the payday candy bar. Oh, and it's not melted in the 100 degree heat. Thank goodness. And then Jeff Speck, we forgot his twice in a row. Ooh. Jeff would Ooh. be one, would be one. You don't hear from about getting it. And then all of a sudden, the second you forget, you hear about it. And he never said anything, but I did make up for it in his next last box and gave him a few extra. And he just said, forgot to message you. Thanks for making up the candy bar slip-ups. I got you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now you're trimming off the silk span. Just following the fin as a guide, looks like. Yep, yep. Just going to get rid of this excess. And I like to get rid of the excess early. You can do a couple of extra, a couple coats. Um, before you trim it, but if you do it now, um, it'll of course dry faster mm -hmm. and you can get it trimmed. It's easier for uh, this quick little demo, but it'll also be a little bit thinner on the edge too. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm gonna turn this because, so you guys can see a little different angle. And I'm gonna take just the very edge of some of those little ratty um, turned up pieces and I'm gonna cut those too. It's uh, it's hard to paint out those. If you leave yeah. silk span border, it's hard to paint out that clearness. Yeah. It shows. And you're using the Wesnip scissors, which you guys use for everything. We use them for everything. These are the best I scissors. You have, I can just look in here and see about four pairs laying Yeah, out. They're, I know. they're all over. Some of them get, uh, I hate to say it, but almost abused. We use them so much that- And you can sharpen them. Yep. Why do you like them so much? Um, I like them for a couple reasons. One, I don't have fatigue because of the spring. The spring-loaded part is very nice. They stay sharp. The only issue I've ever had with them is if they get loose, they might appear dull. But if you just tighten them up right, right here on the locking nut, um, they will go right back together. And nine times out of ten, that's the only issue is they've gotten a little bit loose. They're not dull. Um, I cut things that I shouldn't have been cutting with these and they still hold up really well. I'm going to continue trimming some of these. Wow. I'm going to show you how you can sharpen these. You're the sharpening yeah. king. Um, this is just a smooth, smooth steel. If you want a razor edge, we want our scalpels and knives as sharp, or our knives as sharp as scalpels. And uh, once we've sharpened, we always go to a very smooth, smooth steel. Um, you can take these scissors, put them onto your steel, hold the same angle that the scissors are beveled at, and you can sharpen them just like you can a knife. The other jaw of this scissors is serrated, 
So that it won't help to do. But now this should cut like very, new. Like yeah. brand new. Yeah. Um, and we do that all the time. If they get really dull, we take uh, we take uh, a file, a straight little file, which we have in the supply company too. They come in kits. And you can take a straight file and keep it at the same angle that they're beveled at, sharpen them up. Sometimes I'll put them on the belt sander. And they can open a paint can too from Joe Martin. Um, the reason I like them is because of nerve issues and carpal tunnel issues and things like that. I do not have a lot of strength anymore and compressing is way easier because they're spring loaded. They open by themselves than having to open yeah. I like them so much, I had to buy a second pair of them. Not because I wore them out, because I lose them, and all production would stop if it I does. couldn't find my scissors. And you get a favorite tool, that's what happens. Um, so I think we're ready to put another coat on. Okay, now, right. you've only put one coat, and look at how durable these are already. That no, kind of pressure pretty, a few minutes ago, and that would have broken. That we would have had. Go ahead and give them a second coat. And like people were asking how many coats, um, I always say don't put on so much that it takes away the texture of your fin. Your fin, you have those thin rays. If you put on too much, you won't have any thin rays. Um, but do put on enough to make them nice and durable. The bigger the fish, usually two, three, maybe even four yeah. coats on a big fish. Yeah. I like them to feel nice and full. Um, Fish fins are amazingly thick, they are. and you won't know it unless you mold one and then feel the feel the thickness. So we're just going to work out any any little air bubbles if there are air bubbles as we put it on. Oh, sure. Um, we're going to put on another coat here. I'm going to paint Both it all the way through. Um, I will. Yep. We'll do the other side too. Um, now remember, on the other side, it doesn't show. So if you built up a little more, you could put it on the back side. Some people think that they curl if you get uneven coats. I'm not sure that's necessarily true. Um, I, I haven't seen that, but I bet it kind of makes sense. I know what they're saying, but I like to put it on pretty heavy. Just, I hate fixing fish. <clears throat> that's a bad one. We that finally, bad one. we finally, after taking some Fish, we raise our prices on fish repairs all the time because they're not fun to work with. The only time they're going to be fun is if you get paid plenty for them. Um, and surprisingly, you can make them look, you know, decent. And um, so just a couple weeks ago, we went to a $200 minimum on fish repairs. And uh, it looks like a dog got that one. <laughs> oh, you wait till it's done. It's going to be a work of art. I believe it. You should have seen the rainbow that just got done. Brett just yeah. did that rainbow for that. That was a fire, wasn't it? That was a, after, that was a bad after. one. Yeah, we should have done before and after. Oh, that was goodness. a tough one. Yeah, no. Then we'll get too. more. Yeah, yeah, right. Then we don't. <laughs> we don't want more. You know, don't don't um, slough off that type of work either. You know, everybody wants to work on, you know, the great big, you know, prestigious bongo or something like that. But if you get have decent prices on your fix it. There's a lot of people that have trophies that need maintenance. Yeah. Um, cleaning, cleaning showrooms and, you know, trophy rooms and repairs and get paid decent for it and you'll always have plenty of work. Yeah. Um, I think we've got a few minutes. I might just show them how to fix it. Do a little yeah. fix it real quick. Um, <laughs> oh, it is raining. Uh, it did. It just started pouring. Um, we need rain. Yeah. Like we need a hole in our head. <laughs> <laughs> um, so because of because this fin has the tail has a pretty significant texture to it, um, I'm gonna just real quick rebuild it with put some texture back in it with fix it sculpt. Um, it's a two part product. I think most of you guys in the taxidermy industry are familiar with it. Um, or something similar, right, epoxy for sculpt. antler repairs. Yeah, um, fix it sculpt is 
extremely similar to epoxy sculpt, but dries to more of a bone color. I think we used it with our antler repair sure. um, yeah. seminar. Um, but we the like Brummel says fix it sculpt is the Ferrari versus epoxy being more of the Ford of the epoxy world, um, which was interesting, fun conversation. Um, I'm gonna get a little bit of, you got some water? Nice. Okay. Just a little bit of water to mix this through. More water. And, okay, anytime you're mixing epoxies, make sure that you mix it to one consistent solid color. We had, um, epoxies are two different colors to start, so um, they would have marbling through them if they're not thoroughly mixed, which more than likely it wouldn't set up. Um, it's interesting because when we have students, we let them, we show them how to do fin repairs and set eyes and top of the heads and things like that. <clears throat> Once they have proven that they know what they're doing, we send them home with this stuff so they can work on it in evenings. We have had students come back to class the next day all proud because they put all the backing on their fins and flexitives on their fins only to find out that on six fish they put the um, silk span on the front of the fin. Yep, that's happened many, many times. Front of um, the fins. I feel like um, that's poor teaching. If maybe it's poor <laughs> teaching, yeah, yeah. Um, and they will use the epoxy, like the fix it sculpt or the epoxy sculpt, and they won't mix it thoroughly enough, and they'll build up the entire heads or set eyes, and it'll be marbled, and it'll yeah. be soft hard, soft hard, and you take T-pin, poke it into different spots. Some of you students watching will yeah. remember. <laughs> now you're just feathering that into yep. the fin that's already on there. Yep, just working it in. I think the biggest uh, challenge to epoxy work is blending the transition. Um, like you said, feathering it in. So I'm gonna make sure I actually have it feathered up onto the original fin. Smooth it out here. Now remember, I think every single session I say, um, this is really easy. All you have to do is match two things, two elements, color and texture, color and texture. Yeah. Um, the color will come later, and I think he's gonna show you how to do the texture here. Yeah. Just making sure it's nice and smooth. Um, texturing, we could show them any number of things um, from impression pads. Um, I think you have a... Um, this won't work for this fish, but um, remember we showed you the latex, it may be one, um, we showed you the latex rubber, how to make the rock the other day. This is, um, looks like maybe a walleye fin impression pad. So we had a nice healthy walleye fin like this. We painted latex rubber on it and um, two or three coats, backed it with burlap, peeled it off, you don't need a mold release, and this just stays in my box. If we ever need a texture pad for eight, nine pound walleye, we would let this set up a little bit. I like to put um, mm, safety solvent, thanks, <laughs> safety solvent, rub it on here and press that right in, pull it off, and it will match a texture of that kind of fish. I think we can try it. You can try it. What uh, causes fish to have an orange gummy stuff on the paint? Mounts are many 20 to 30 years old. Sounds like oil bleeding. Yeah, oil it? bleeding through. Um, fish that don't get oil, skin. Oil, Martin says oil bleeding through. Yeah. Fish that don't get skin well enough or, you know, get warm over time or something like that. What are you doing, Brett? What did you put on it? I just put safety solvent on this. I'm and just going to. Um, it kind of acts release. as a release. Yeah. So you, so so you don't, so it's bad. better if you let this epoxy um, set for a little bit, but yeah. we don't have time to do that, so we're gonna check it out here. I'm just kind of guessing as to where the fin rays are. I'm gonna press that in softly. Yeah, I got just a I little bit, a little soft texture. Now that I know where they are, I can come in here and kind of accentuate them a little bit. I'm gonna start on the fin and work my way off. The Alexon trim job just looks a little amateurish to me. <laughs> so any texture I pick up, up 
on the original, I'm going to carry back through into the epoxy, and um, you can you can fix about anything with epoxy scope that you or fix it scope that you set your mind to. It's just a matter of blending that texture and then color. Build some of the fin rays out here like this. And then one of the last things to do, I'm going to borrow your little artist brush, is to take just a little bit of safety solvent and I'm going to brush over that and, and blend it out. There's a lot of things you can use with that, um, those epoxies. You can use safety solvent, you can use lacquer there, you can use water, alcohol. Um, they all work and they all work a little bit differently. And we will worry about coloring that in the next step. Look at that, that's pretty nice. It works out pretty well. Now, if there was something too high, you can always grind it off. If there's yep. something too low, you can always add a little bit. Yep, it can Not be sanded. For a world that sand. would be a good, here's another, here's another little split in here that would be a good spot for a little bead of it. Yep. I'll put some in there. Um, what, do you, what have you got? All sorts of stuff. It's getting to be time. It We're is gonna time. You better talk we do fast. have a giveaway from last week. We were giving away three of these water brushes. I'm gonna let you guys talk about them real quick. These Why things so are so cool. So you fill water in this guy, and then the tip is like a paintbrush tip. And so you'll dip it in your paint, and then the water just kind of evenly comes through as you're painting. And they've been using it for scale tipping scale a lot. Scale tipping. We tipped, I mean, all these largemouth back here, the walleye, the smallmouth. It's a time saver because inefficient because you're not dipping as many times. You're getting more scales tipped with it. And it, what happens with uh, liquid scales or any of those water-based, they tend to dry on your brush and you have to keep moistening them in new, you know, liquid scales or whatever you're using. And with the water in there, it seeps water just enough to keep the metallics coming off of your brush, and it can be pretty fast. I mean, we've we got pretty fast at scale tipping, I think. I think it's these. I and, think it sped us up. And you're using it on your habitat rack in the scene. I use it on that, yeah. so I'm using it on waters, use? not don't use it on solvents. Like uh, it may work on oils. I wouldn't use it on lacquers. With lacquers, I think it would be bristles. Yeah. But anyway, we're giving three of these away from last week's winner, and last week's winner is Don Staglin. Hey Don. Brushes. Hey, so we'll get that sent to you. Thanks for watching and liking and sharing everything. This week we're going to give away 